Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming up this week, Disney dominates the box office and announces more plans for new Marvel films. Some new changes are coming to Mickey's not-so-scary Halloween party. And our discussion this week is very simple. Why are you a Disney fan? Plus, we're going to introduce you to the newest member of the team. All that coming up next. From the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is The Diz Unplugged. This is The Diz Unplugged, episode 1043 for the week of July 23rd, 2019. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com and by disboards.com. Join the millions of Disney fans who have planned their vacation on the Diz forums with information on theme parks, dining, resorts, and much more. Head over to disboards.com and join in the discussion. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming to you live from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, Mr. Sean Falk. Hi. Steve Porter. Hello. Denny Sunderly. Hi there. Corey Martin. I'm just happy to be here. Back in the production nook, our associate producer, Mr. Rhino Clavin. Hello. And our producer, Mr. Craig Williams. Hi. And hanging out over in the corner is uh, today's designated dog nanny, uh, Fiasco, because hey he is waiting... <laughs> To take this precious little baby. This is Dolly, uh, my new uh, 10-week-old golden retriever. Thought she should make her debut this week and introduce uh, introduce all of you to her. Oh, and she's tired because she's been having a big puppy day. Uh, just got her last week. Um, I've been thinking about it for a while. I thought it was time. Abby needed a mm-hmm. Abby needed a sister, and uh, they have been getting along getting along awesome. I'm really happy with how that's been, how that's been going. She's actually heading out to uh, puppy boot camp oh uh, for two weeks tomorrow. Um, that's She's what we did. So with, sweet. We oh. did. A, Abby was a little bit older when I did that with her, but I decided to get like right on it uh, with her. But she's really good. She's a little crap machine, but you know, ten week old puppy. That's what you're going to get. But she's awesome. I'm going to let Fiasco take her back. Just wanted to show everybody oh, my new baby. Bye. Oh, bye, darling. <laughs> and uh, welcome, you guys. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, hope your week is off to a good start. We do have a couple of things to mention in housekeeping. First, um, I want to just uh, let everybody know that August 6th, we will not have a show, uh, either a Disneyland show or a Disney World show. Uh, that week is our Dreams Unlimited Travel 20th anniversary event, and the team is going to be very busy that week, getting ready, and doing things, and all very, very excited. I still don't know where the hell I'm supposed to be and when, but that's not, that's not anything unusual. Also, Magic Candle Company wanted me to mention they have a new candle that they just released called Terror Tower, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I, I got to say, when I first read the description of the fragrance and I saw patchouli, I was like, Ugh. It, this is a great candle. This is a great candle. I'm really loving this candle. It's one of my, it's one of my new favorites. So um, they wanted me to mention that. MagicCandleCompany.com. Code Disney info saves you 15% and helps support the show. So it's a, it's a, it's a win-win. It's a win-win. Um, and also, Steve, you wanted to mention something about a Give Kids the World event that's coming yes, up. Yes, they are hosting another speaker series. Uh, all proceeds go to Give Kids the World. It's going to be uh, with Paige O'Hara and Linda Larkin, voices of Belle and Jasmine from classic Disney animated films. Uh, it's going to be on August 3rd uh, from 5.30 to 8.30. Depends. You're going to have to check out their website because the timing of when you should arrive depends on what ticket you purchase. Um, so check that out. Because there's like a VIP ticket. Yes, right? there's a VIP ticket in which you can meet both of the princesses. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's at www.gktw.org slash princess. Uh, tickets range in price from 35 to 150 That 150 is for the meet and greet. 
again, all pre- proceeds go to give kids the world. So I'm assuming that last one was very successful. If they're doing another one, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I see this being a continuous thing. I right? hope so. I know they uh, they had reached out to us because they needed help selling some of these tickets, and you guys. You guys stepped up and delivered the goods, and we had over 100 people there, I believe. Yeah, it was like 125, and they had a couple that showed up just uh, right at the door and said, hey, can we get in? We're willing to pay. And so I think they had 125 tickets sold and then extra bonus people. So, so uh, you know, obviously this is to support Give Kids the World. Um, if you are going to be in town for August 3rd, great opportunity to meet two Disney legends um, that... Uh, I think these will sell fast. Yeah, much faster. I think than the last one. The, the last one did very well. Apparently, they the the guys there that that spoke had a lot a lot of cool stuff to say about their experiences with Walt. Um, and but I mean, there you can't beat Disney princesses. I think people are going to be really <laughs> excited about this. So be sure if you want to get them, they might go a lot faster than the last one. So you know, check the, it out. Those are the best stories. Hearing stories from people that actually knew Walt and talk to him and worked with him. Yeah. Those are the best stories to hear. Well, and I mean, sadly, there's only so many of those people left, too. Yeah. So, you know. But this, you know, like you said, an opportunity to meet... Disney princesses. Disney so. princesses and to help give kids the world. And, you know, you're talking about the cheapest ticket being $35. Can't it's beat incredible. that with a stick. Mm-hmm. Um, so show your support for Give Kids the World. GKTW.org, as in GiveKidsTheWorld.org, forward slash princess... Princess or princesses? Princess. Let me double check. It's princess. Princess. Um, dream big, princess. Um, <laughs> and uh, help them out. So, and of course, um, John and Kevin are uh, on our Adventures by Disney San Francisco backstage magic trip. I was supposed to be, but I uh, have been dealing with some pretty bad back issues. Was not able to travel. It's much better now. Um, so and thank you everybody for reaching out to send well wishes. I'm fine, um, except when my back is out. And there were like three days where it was pretty much I was just in bed. Oh, that it was just miserable. not couldn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, you know as soon as my back started feeling better, I go out and get a puppy to bend over and clean yeah. up puppy poop. <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately, fortunately I have a new roommate, Cody, and Cody's been a big help with that. <laughs> Uh, the last couple days has been fine. I've got my I've got my full range of motion back, thank God. But um, so yeah. Um, anything else in housekeeping? Uh, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Last week uh, on the show, I had said that you know we'd created a new page. Um, we have our DVC fan page, and then we have a sub shoot off there of DVC fan canceled reservations. Um, so that form is still there. It's available for people to. Uh, let others know that they're about to cancel their DVC vacation that they have planned so someone else might be able to scoop it up before it goes back into the Disney pool. Where is this at? uh, On Facebook. It's on Facebook. Facebook. We had the link uh, last week. I'll get to you again if you need it. Um, So that is not a place to try to sell your Disney vacation, but if you would like to sell it, you're more than welcome to email me directly at sean.falk at disneyinfo.com, S-E-A-N dot F-A-U-L-K, um, and I can help direct you into the right place to do that because we've had some issues there. Yeah, so yeah, you just can't sell it. There's no way for me to like make sure that someone pays you for what you're trying to sell. So, But I can get you to the right channels if you want to sell rent out your points and sell your vacation that you have planned so cool. so cool yep yeah yeah about 400 500 people in that yeah now. yeah so cool all right Ryan, did you have something yes um uh, i want to say thank you to the um listener viewer uh person that mailed uh pete and myself some uh, oh yeah it was pat, pat, pat i'm Fox. sorry i Pat, yeah. Yeah. Um, he sent me a corgi blanket, and I uh, was wrapped up in it for most and the of the coolest. Until we got Thanks for my gift, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for my gift. So, really appreciate it. Nobody cares about you. <laughs> um, <laughs> sent me the coolest, like, because um, he noticed that, uh, or she, she noticed that I was I'll wearing watch that. Um, can I talk? No, I'm there. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> that jacket I got in Tokyo Disneyland. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So a scarf and a fleece blanket. With this Mickey Mouse material, it's gorgeous. Flannel on the inside and the Mickey Mouse on the outside. Oh, I should have brought so it in. Sweet. It's really, really cool. So thank you, 
Thank you very, very much for that. It was a very sweet gift. Yeah, and then um, I just have one other thing I wanted to mention um, because I talked about it last week. We did uh, officially, as of today, have introduced a new tier on our uh, Patreon site, patreon.com slash disunplugged. And on there, there is now a $5 tier um, where you can sign up and you will receive uh, access to the Patreon-exclusive audio-only shows that uh, really any person can make if they want, if they end up choosing wanting to do that at all on the team but um what you're guaranteed for is at least one show by me a month which uh, like let's be honest it's gonna be more than that but i'm just saying bare minimum you know um and that i already i already made one too and i actually put it out to anybody that is a patreon supporter so that you could sample it and see if it's something that you're interested in or not or you want to stay where you are my god um but uh this is we are dropping stuff like crazy. <laughs> whatever tier you're in you receive um access to anything below that tier so if you're in the ten dollar tier already for pete's solo show because that's where that is um and uh that's anybody else in the team will be right below p right on that other tier but if you're in pete's tier you'll already get you'll get this access already so you don't have to like sign up for a five dollar tier too it's just it's just if anybody's in like the one or three dollar level area and you're thinking like oh, i could do two dollars more a month to listen to this idiot talk a little bit more that's where this idiot will be five dollar tier but so check it out um can you repeat that no <laughs> i couldn't even if i tried yes yeah so that's that Patreon.com slash is unplugged. Check it out. Validate me. Validate my existence. Thank you. <laughs> is it, isn't that what Instagram is for? Yeah. Well, True. yeah. That's just for never my seen, looks. This is for my I've voice. I've never seen an Instagram account that had so many selfies on it. Uh, every you know, single picture. It's very entertaining. I have tried the uh, the scenic shots, and they just don't do as well. See, People want to see my business in There's it. My reason. face, not my business. <laughs> yeah, I, see your business. Yeah. Oh, oh, I don't yeah. think Instagram yeah. allows that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow, that went south fast. <laughs> Let's blur that. All right. Anything else? Anything else in housekeeping? Craig, nothing from you? Got nothing. I like your haircut, Craig. Did, was I supposed to say something? No. No. I, just, I got nothing. You just kind of back there. Oh yeah, no, I'm working. Yeah. I was gonna yeah. shave my head, but <laughs> I have a feeling like I'm like I have well, like Craig, some sort of weird Craig's, thing. Craig's very active. Yeah. Craig's very active in the chat room when, when we're doing this, so he's yeah. monitoring what's going on in chat. <laughs> oh, Don's just looking to make sure because yeah. Corey's also got it up on his screen. Yeah, we have 1800 right now. 1835. All right, people are dropping off like flies. Okay, oh, <laughs> I'm just dear. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, talk about the news. Not a big. Newsweek, unless you're into Disney movies. I am. Yay. Um, and so Lion King, mm -hmm. the live action Lion King, um, $185 million opening weekend. This is just the latest in a string of, the, I think the only misfire the studio has had this year has been Dumbo, mm -hmm. technically speaking. By comparison, mm -hmm. everything else yeah. Has done has done incredibly well. So Lion King, uh, I, I haven't seen it yet. Has anyone here seen it? Yeah, uh, I've seen it, and I and Craig saw it too. But okay, did you so see it, everything I haven't that, seen it yet. Mm -mm. Like yeah. what I'm hearing is that the critics hate it, right? But the audiences love it. Yep. Um, Rotten Tomatoes. It was at 55 percent. Uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, which is not great, but it was an 83% audience score. I saw 89. Or 89. Well, yeah, that's wonderful. I did hear the soundtrack because <coughs> I was more I was interested in that before because I like saw the CGI animation. I mean, they kept selling live action, but there's no live animals in this movie. But Wait, they, what? <laughs> yeah, John West. I know. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but <laughs> um, and then there was a lot of people talking online about like people not posting spoilers as if they didn't see the movie 25 years. Well, ago. Well, this is when the criticism. The critic the big criticism is that it is basically a shot by shot recreation of the animated feature that they really didn't take any any license with it is what I've been hearing well, I haven't seen I'm it I'm fine with that though um, like, yeah. if, it's a, if it's a live action shouldn't it be based on the original what well, would well, you like to, to hear the from the people who've seen it the last time listen, talk to the critics <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Critics Corner. Uh, no, but I, 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 I text Craig. Won't tell me anything about a movie before I see it, and he saw it before I did. And so when I told him I was, I was done. I, I was like, I, you'll be surprised to hear this, but I actually really enjoyed this one quite a bit. And it is a shot-for-shot -shot remake with slight deviations from the original thing. But I went into it right when it opens, and we saw this trailer for this, the opening scene two years ago at the last E23, so it was really cool to see the evolution of this movie, but I 
I, I took it as this is the Disney nature version of the Lion King. So this is Lion King told with like how are these animals move, how do they react, and mm. and whatnot. But but I also this is part of my episode on that. This is this, this is so, true so, Cisco and Ebert. Right you can now. hear me so, talk about it. It's more men on film. <laughs> but, men on film. Yeah. What did you think? I I I really enjoyed it. Uh, Kylie and I went, and we like. The Lion King for me, that's my Renaissance movie. Yeah, uh, everyone of our age, like Rhino, myself, Steve, Sean, you know that was that was our period mm-hmm. in Disney movie. So I feel like everyone has a different one. Like I feel like my sister's is probably Little Mermaid, mine's Lion King for sure. So I've been looking forward to this for for years, and I will say I listened to the soundtrack first. And I wasn't disappointed, but I definitely I learned to manage my expectations then. But that being said, then once I saw it in the context of the movie, I thought I thought like all of the uh, the choices they made for the voice actors was pretty much spot on and it fit well. The only one I didn't like, I did not care for Chiwetel Ejiofor as Scar. I just felt like he wasn't menacing enough for me. I mean, Jeremy Irons just like well, he set the bar that's high a tough on bar. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that's why like I, I wish they could have brought him back for it the same way like James Earl Jones set the bar for Mufasa. You can't replace him as Mufasa, so they bring him back. I feel like Jeremy Irons should have been the other uh, added example hmm. to that, but uh, I didn't. I wasn't bothered by any of the issues with the emotionless face on characters. I mean, it's trying to be realistic. If a lion starts smiling to me on screen <laughs> that looks realistic, I'm going to start worrying about <laughs> what drugs they were on yes. when they were making this movie. Uh, and uh, so, they, but they be, did a, they did a lot with body language. So that's yeah. the thing. They react the way an animal reacts while they're talking. You know, they nuzzle the head. They do whatever. It's like I, I, I but, but I continue. If yeah. You the know. only other like I, the only other things I really had were minor. Like I, they, the Beyonce song "Spirit," I think is what mm-hmm. it's called. Like it's inserted into such a weird moment that was like one of my favorite yeah, moments this, in the animated one. Yeah. Uh, it just perfect Hans Zimmer score already, and they're like, oh, "We're just going to remove it," and all of a sudden Beyonce is going to come on and just start like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa yeah, I'm not a Beyonce spirit. fan. Yeah. I know it, it just people hate me, but I just... <laughs> it it was weird. Um, but you know, they they added. Of course, they didn't add anything they to the that, story. That rendition to Craig's album. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they didn't add anything. They slightly did change like, like a, Timon and a couple Pumbaa's small, dialogue is different yeah stuff, Timon yeah. and Pumbaa are different Billy Eichner in my opinion steals the show if you don't already know him from Parks and Rec Billy on the street American horror story anything yeah. that he's done he's Hilarious. like he is so so good um and then they just they added these like really delicate beautiful moments like uh right in the beginning they added this sequence where it's like a 30 second tracking shot of a mouse that yeah. that you know, if you know the animated one, Scar eventually mm. traps, but it's set to this new Hans Zimmer score in there that's just like, it's like, oh my God, they, they, they really want this to look like a nature documentary. I'm, it's not for everyone. I, I enjoyed it. I so, I, I, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, it, one thing you said about the, about the casting of Scar that it's, I, I felt the same way about the, the villain in Aladdin. I don't. I didn't oh, think. Yeah. I don't think the they Jafar cast yeah. Jafar right. properly. He wasn't as yep. evil yeah. enough, and I so I'm, I'm wondering if they're having a hard time casting well, the villains. It, it, the the hard part is that uh, Chua Chua Jafar. He doesn't. It his part. His is one of the only parts, and it wasn't even like oh I hated it or anything. I I didn't mind his voice as Scar. It was the be prepared, which is one of my favorite numbers in the original. That he doesn't really sing it, and I was okay with that. But then randomly, the last two signs of the song lines. Of the song like not even the lines like the last word on the last two sentences he does sing so it was like they were trying to tiptoe into it and i was like i wish you had just uh, done it as a speech because there was this yeah. really cool welling thing and that's one of the things that i think some people need to understand like those visuals work great in an animated form where you know remember he's like walking and there's all that like green smoke that's going off and and all the um the the uh the hyenas are marching and it you know that it this plays out in a much different way and it's i i thought it was i thought it was really interesting it, the the visuals are mind blowingly good like that cool. you at any point there are moments where i was like this has got to be a real cat here at some point right but except for you know they're not 
because there was a lot of choice camera shots where they're very low to the ground behind or under some of the animals and you're like oh these are barbie doll cats yeah they don't okay. got no parts now have you seen it I not seen Lion King. No, um, I did have a general question for y'all because I, I mean, ever since they, I, I like the idea of the remakes, and I think some people forget like they made like remade like Cinderella and stuff like several years back. I just don't think it's like lumped into the new. So this has been going on a little bit, but I don't like when they put too familiar of voices in these character renditions. Like I couldn't watch Moana without thinking that's the rock. Like I never saw it as a character except the rock. So like with characters like Beyonce, was it just like, this is Beyonce I'm watching? They they were actually the only two I struggled with was Beyonce as Nala and um, Donald Glover as Simba were the only two voices in the movie where I was kind of like, they didn't, I didn't hate them, but they didn't, I felt like in a, where like John Oliver as Zazu was fantastic, Billy Eichner as Timon and uh, Seth Rogen as Pumbaa, they, they kind of all worked with the embodiment of their animals and that thing. I felt like theirs were just kind of a little middle of the road. Well, the thing that we talked about, I'll keep it short here. I think it was that we have to remember that for a lot of the audience, I know there is a heavy adult audience, but for all the kids out there watching, like we were, you know, I may have seen Ferris Bueller when Lion King came out, but I didn't put together that it was Matthew Broderick's voice. You know, I knew I knew James Earl Jones because of Star Wars, and I would have known um, the, JTT the from oh. Home Improvement. Mm-hmm. And beyond that, the rest of these voices, even though they're huge people like Nathan Lane, Jeremy Irons, I, I was a kid. Why should I know them? So that's that's the one weird aspect about growing up is now that we all these voices instantly stand out to us. You have to remember the kids that well, are seeing it. They don't. Well, quick Finley question. It's know. a yes or no. Like, should people like for for the younger generation that maybe have not seen it, should they watch the animated version before they see this or does it even matter? It doesn't matter. No, doesn't I would matter. actually okay. say don't rewatch it until after. OK. All right. So. Uh, 185 million opening weekend in the United States. Uh, worldwide, 531 million dollars over the weekend for this film. Going to go north of a billion easily. Um, that goes without saying. But the other, the other big story: Avengers: Endgame becoming the most successful box office film in history, beating Avatar, not adjusted for inflation. So when you consider that, that it's not adjusted for inflation, it's just dollar for dollar, it's well ahead of Avatar. Now at, uh, where's the number? Um, Well, in a note on that too, as I just want to point out, this took about 70 days, a little over 70 days to happen. Avatar took 263 days to get to where it went. So not only is this the highest grossing, it's also the fastest. All right, our story doesn't have... uh, I'm looking at you. It doesn't have the actual number. Uh, it says that Endgame was 500,000 behind Avatar's 2.789.7 billion in box office sales, but now has surpassed it. When it, when it passed it, it passed the. It was an estimated number that it had passed so it that day. It's they done, didn't have the actual number. Yet. Okay. Well, all right. So uh, 2.8 billion. Yeah. Uh, it has beaten uh, Avatar. Well, um, I think I think with that stuff and that kind of harkens with like what was going on with Lion King as well. Um, It kind of goes back to when they remade, I guess not remade, but when Tim Burton did Alice in Wonderland and not the first one, not the second one, but they, uh, that movie, I mean, grossed over a billion dollars. And for the longest stretch, like that was one of the top like five grossing movies or 10 or whatever. And I think most people went to see that Alice in Wonderland, Tim Burton collaboration for the intrigue of like what is this and what's it going to be and so i think that's kind of propelled lion king even more so because they did it in such a different format than what it was originally i i was interested because i'm like you know it's a unique thing whereas i think that was how it was with avatar as well i think the graphics and the it was cutting the cgi oh my god was like the greatest thing ever at the time and so i think it speaks more to Avengers because it's been like a slow build or a quick build up, but an overall time lapse build up to be like this was a successful series compared to Avatar that I think most people watch just to see the CGI animation. I, I do have the number too. It is uh, it is two billion seven hundred and ninety million five hundred and ninety one thousand four hundred and seventeen dollars in release for eighty seven days so far. Um, so yeah. 
I, 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 I also, it should be noted that Aladdin is about to go to a billion, and so isn't Spider Man. So, and, um, and if you're saying that Lion King, they said Lion King as well. So that's uh, three, not cla- not including Spider Man. There was another movie I can't remember right now. Uh, oh, is okay, about to be so, three billion dollar movies. This so year. you know, it, it's one story after another with Disney, uh, where films are concerned about success, success, success. Of course, we see that translated into the theme parks in terms of IP put in the parks. Mm-hmm. Um, but we also know, if we're, if we're students of history, we also know that eventually, eventually, this run is going to end, right? They're, they're, Bob Iger's going to move on. Bob Iger's going to be out in the next two years. Um, and, and let's be honest, this, is, this whole thing has been orchestrated by him. The acquisition of Lucasfilm, the acquisition of Marvel, Absolutely. the acquisition of Pixar, all orchestrated by Bob Iger with an eye on doing exactly what he's doing. When, when does Disney fall off movie people? When does Disney fall off a cliff with the with the films? Well, I already read this thing where they were saying like this will be a big year because they're you know then we also have the last of the Skywalker Star Wars movies at the end of this year. But then the box office as a whole, not just Disney, is going to have a slump next year. And this year is actually behind last year, even though we have had these record breaking movies so far. It is behind last year, but it, it by the end of the year I think it will be ahead. But um, is that next year there's there's no Star Wars plans that have immediately been announced yet. But either way, we know there's no Star Wars movie next year. Um, it's a little bit lighter in terms of the movie theater when it comes to the Marvel movies. There's only the two that have been announced so far. And I think that next year and maybe the year after, it'll now with this Disney Plus streaming service, I think there... I don't know anything else that's coming out next year from Disney that isn't... That those two Marvel movies... I don't know what else is coming out. And if they're just a Mulan. But Artemis like, Fowl. Artemis oh. Fowl is the other one. But there's nothing original that's coming out. These are all, they're relying very heavily on franchises and remakes and like what what happens when that bubble breaks. But it's going to happen eventually, you know. Well, I think to, I mean, like speaking on it, like we even talk about the Disney Renaissance and how great that was. But even then it started hitting the Hunchback of Notre Dame slump area, which I love that movie. But obviously that's not as big Lion as Lion King. King right, Lion stuff. King was the pinnacle. Right. And then after that it started to slide. Right. And even then it went down through that period of like meet the robinsons chicken little uh that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff that we forget existed home on the range was in there so that's not until it really started even like princess and the frog didn't do that well compared to what they had hoped so you kind of hit tangled and frozen and it came back up and so i think that's why we're getting so many remakes is like when they tried to hit these things like home on the range and chicken little that were not that were really expounded stories on like a minor thing or just a whole new creation people really didn't go see it i mean even now people like lilo and stitch but it didn't it didn't do that amazingly well when it first came out right. so you know people aren't going to see new things when they mm-hmm. create them so but then I, they complain that they're that not making new things because um the head of pixar i forgot p Doctor. Doctor, yeah, uh, has announced or said. I read recently that he's planning on Pixar not having a sequel like in the works for a little while. Like they want to do all originals. Well, that's one studio that's gotten away with oh, yeah, uh, do, uh, being able to do original stories mm-hmm. and do really, really well. Mm-hmm. But at San Diego Comic Con over the weekend, they announced, which I'm surprised that they decided to yeah. use Comic Con to announce this. This is one of the reasons they created D23 was specifically to be able to make these announcements. But a whole slew of new Marvel films. Um, The Eternals, I have no idea what that is, so I'll look to the the geeks in the back. Um, It's going to star Angelina Jolie, Richard Madden, somebody else whose name I can't pronounce. Um, Kamal, I forgot his last name. Nanjiani. Okay, him. Um, From Silicon Valley. This is, oh, 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 right, right, right. You know, yeah. Um, November 2020, that's going to be coming out. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. um, Coming out in the fall of 2020. Um, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I don't know any of these. That that story is actually, for anybody that wants to know a fun fact here, the Ten Rings are what um, the Mandarin is wearing in Iron Man 3, and the fake Mandarin, the fake. and the mm-hmm. real Mandarin is going to be the villain in this one. And they alluded to this like 10 years ago, uh, or not 
maybe like six or seven. But whenever Iron Man three came out, they did a, like one shot. So this is gonna these are cl- still rolling into the mythology and the MCU right now. But we're yeah. looking about nine or ten films. Well, eleven well, films. Fi- five films, five Disney Plus series. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, so right. that was the that was the big thing, and and they they also were saying that. So there is there's Doctor Strange in. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, and that's going to be their first horror movie, but that's going to be a team-up with the Scarlet Witch, but that will be right after she has her own Disney Plus show, which is WandaVision, and they said that all of these shows that they've announced, they're going to directly impact and tie in with the movie, so it's going to be like, I think, essential viewing, and I think they're treating them like they're just long-form movies. So if you're a Marvel fan, and you're basically going to get cornered into having to get Disney Plus. I I think if you're anybody, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, Be- smart. Yeah, they said that one is going to feed into the other. So you know, the input and the output. You, you gotta, you gotta look at it all. Okay. So. Like anybody else doesn't get, doesn't give a crap. Well, that's oh, what, that's goodness. the part that I I was thinking about the other day, where I was like, if you're not invested in Marvel, and I'm not judging anybody who isn't, that's okay. You don't like superhero movies, that's your thing. Like, it's not that I don't like them. I do like them, but. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I got it. I got it. You own Marvel. Can well, you give me something Something else? And that's what I was thinking the other day when they made this announcement. I was like, well, geez, that is 10 massive properties that Disney is very heavily involved in. And then you got like the little bit of Pixar, but where's the Walt Disney live action studio? You know, other than the Maleficent 2, you know, and Mulan. Where's where's something else? Where's a where's a new animated movie from you know animation? Craig is on the edge of his seat waiting to watch Maleficent too. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, boy, sorry, cannot wait. For All that right, one. now we we have to move on. We have to move on because we spent way 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 too much time Just on pop. that. Uh, no, um, if you want to hear more, I actually recorded a forty five minute go. episode that is up on Patreon right All now. All right, well, to okay. There you go. So perfect. But if you're with me, like I said. Not that I don't enjoy the Marvel films, but enough. Do you think any of that will be announced at D23? They get, I don't know what they're going to announce at D23, honestly. There um, are people wondering, I mean, because they look at the Marvel lineup and they go, okay, so that's Phase 4, but there's still details that we don't know about Phase 4, and so they're thinking maybe D23? Maybe. So maybe I mean, there'll be you know, things for we'll, we'll, everyone. We'll find, out, we'll find out this time next month. All right, now, um, yeah. moving over to the parks. Um some uh, new announcements made about some changes coming to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party this year. Some of them long overdue. Finally, um, mm-hmm. changing up the fireworks, moving away from Hollow Wishes to do an entirely new fireworks show uh, themed around Jack Skellington. Um, of course, it's going to be heavy on projections and lasers because that's what they do now. Um, and of course, the character experiences, they're gonna, it sounded to me, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, like last year they did, they had a, that, that character walking around inside Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes. Um, it sounded like they're gonna That's expand on that Good. this year. Good. I love that. Because they, I thought that was great. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it sounded in the announcement to me like they were going to expand on that because I believe they used the word characters. Yes. And that would yes. be enough to get me to go back. I mean, the last couple of years I've been because, like, we go as work. But I, before, I always went for my own fun and benefit and stuff. And then I was like, this is the same thing every year, and it gets more crowded. And I'm just, like, getting upset. And, like, people are getting in front of me. And, like, I feel like my, like, tensions are really high there. Well, and that's how... I- things explode and people punch people at Tower of Terror. I think the more they can get people to ride, so if they can put as many cool experiences in the rides as possible is a good thing because with how crowded they're getting, like you said, if they can get people on these rides, because typically they have, you know, five, ten minute waits but, and so everyone is basically just walking around the park, it feels way more crowded because you're not getting sucked up into rides. Now what they need to do is they need to sell fewer tickets to these events. These events need to be special. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. that may mean you jack the price up a little bit. Or you have more dates open. Or you yeah. have more dates open. Yeah. Um, but the fact of the matter is, what I've seen these last few years, I was always a proponent of these parties, saying they're worth it, they're worth it. And I think last year, the year before, was the first time I had to say, no, no, it's not worth it. The, it's too crowded. It's mm. not what was special about 
that hard ticket event was that it wasn't that crowded. It wasn't insane. It was a special experience. Now, it's the same experience you get in the middle of the day with, with some candy, candy. Yeah. and a fireworks show. Um, yeah. and so if a family wants to make that their park day, so if they if they decide we're going to hang out at the resort, we're going to enjoy the pool, the whole nine yards, and then they make the party their park day, what's your I still there? think it's not worth it. Okay. I still think it's not worth it for what you would pay to add a day on to your pass okay. versus what you're going to pay. What's the price up to now on for the party? The Halloween party. Isn't it about $85, $90? I have to look it up. It, it always yeah. goes up. So it's from, what time does it start? Four. I, it usually, it I always go in early, seven. so I never know. You can get in at 4. It starts at 7. seven. Usually yeah. it's till midnight. Seven. Ends at 12. Okay. Um, so you're getting five hours, and you know, we were seeing attraction lines that were no different than they were during the day. Yeah. Where you're talking a two-hour wait mm -hmm. for Mine Train. You're talking... A 45 minute to an hour wait for Space Mountain. Um, well, I, I think for me, the main thing that, like, they'd have a hard time releasing more dates just because that gets, like, the travel agent side of me, like, really triggered, where I'm like, oh my God, these people who booked 180 days ago and got their dining are gonna, like, lose their mind. Yep. So I'm like, well, if they put more dates, like, people will just go nuts because no, they need like, to I do planned it. my actual trip around this. They need to do and it then, outside the booking window. Right, so they, like, they really can't do that, and then they can go up on the ticket prices, but then everyone freaks out about that, too. And the, to me, I think it'd be a better offer if they had more distinct characters for that exact thing. I mean, some of the uh, I mean, two years ago, what they didn't have that many characters. I remember the line from Moana was like three or four hours. It was almost the whole yep. length of the party you know, was when that long. We were talking about last year, I think it was last year, that they had a, a, a limit on tickets. I think it was about 24,000 or 25,000. And they ended up overselling for like 32,000. Mm -hmm. That's that a big sense. difference. Yeah, that's a big difference. And that's what they were doing. They were overselling the parties. Um, and this is where, and especially when, you know, as a DBC member now, going to the Moonlight Magic events, which mm -hmm. are free to DBC members, mm -hmm. they limit it to about 4,000 people. It's very hard to get tickets to. And you have the park to yourself. And so you see an experience like that, and then you think of, I'm going to pay... 90 or 100 dollars to go into Mickey's not so scary Halloween party and it's 32,000 people and there are, you know it's no different I'm just going to end up spending the extra money on it for an extra day on my pass and go as normal and save that well, save so that money even, I was going to even with 24,000 people I mean the capacity of Magic Kingdom's what 55,000 I mean you're still I think it's closer to like 60 Well you're 60. still almost at half the capacity of normal I mean that's like Christmas capacity like we're closing the park cuz it's Christmas and New Year's So like th it is a typical day if they're selling 32,000 tickets like that's way too much but adding more of those like the characters like Pirates of the Caribbean I've ridden these rides a million times personally and most people who come every year they've ridden them a lot and that gave me just enough of something different and unique for me to be Absolutely. like, hey, you know, pirates that had live actors. I like that was really cool. I'll, I got well, to ride you know, it. Well, part see. of it, I think, part of the problem for me is that you know we're always there for the the first night, mm -hmm. and you know the first night of Halloween, the Halloween party is now in it was August. yesterday, August yeah. 16th. <laughs> okay, so. so it's you know eight thousand degrees. Mm -hmm. You're in this theme park that is jam-packed with people. You can't move, and you have paid ninety dollars so, for the privilege. So on Halloween, so the peak pricing non-discounted for an adult is one hundred and thirty-five dollars. Jesus. Uh, so with that. tax, it's one forty-three seventy-eight. And what's uh, the cheapest? I'm finding like on a Monday in September, seventy-nine for an adult. I that's mean, non-discounted. Have that's, you been on Halloween before? Uh, well, no, we've we're not on Halloween. But I got to say, hearkening back to something you guys were saying earlier with with adding different and new things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got on Space Mountain, which was my least favorite attraction of all of them. Got on it with my husband because hello, they've turned off all lights and they're playing rock and roll music. So yeah, you you got to go ride that ride, and it was it was really cool. And then all the new snacks that they've added the past couple of years, mm -hmm. that's huge. I mean, for somebody who's a 
a who loves special snacks. I mean, it's fun to go and and go. Oh, I want to try I, that one. Don't get me I wrong. Wonder, you know, I think the elements. I think yeah, the elements of the trying. Halloween party are phenomenal. Yeah. Right. I love. I love the Halloween party. Yeah. What I don't love. The crowds. Is what, what what the thing I loved most about the Halloween party was you didn't feel like you were slammed in there. It I, wasn't special. Is that is that what it feels special, like? It used to be special, and yeah. now it just fe- like how can you enjoy okay. any of those things when you've just paid eighty to a hundred or a hundred and thirty dollars? Mm-hmm. And it's hot. And it's hot, and, and it's crowded, crowded yeah. and there were long lines for everything. What I used to love about the Halloween party is you can go hop on a ride, and it was five minutes. Sure. Ten minute wait. I wonder if it's a double-edged sword that they're adding all these experiences. Not that I, I want them to add experiences, don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but I wonder if it's a little bit of a double-edged short sword because by adding them, you're then attracting people to come back that are like locals or whatever, and oh. then you're making it more mm-hmm. crowded. Like not, I mean, like it's I don't want them TV. to stop. Then they just yeah. limit tickets. Like They can limit have, tickets. Yeah. They can they limit can, tickets. Okay. And well, I would be okay, okay with them raising the price. Honest yeah. to God, I okay. would be okay with them raising the price of it. I know some people would not. I would be okay with them raising the price of it if we were talking about a really limited 15,000, yeah. 20,000 mm. max. Like no, ba- no bad parade spot, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> what yeah. was it we went to that was, it was like an after hours thing and they gave free ice cream. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. That was the after hours events. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that was worth it. Like that was like it was very limited. You got to ride anything. It was and those pretty much are, a walk. Those go on for like this is like three hours after the park closes. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you pay a hundred and twenty five dollars, mm-hmm. I think it is. What yeah. are the numbers held to for those evenings? Do you know? Uh, I don't At one point in the very beginning it was five thousand. They maxed oh, wow. them out at five thousand. I don't okay. know what they what 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 that is now. Okay. And it's sad because like when you like because I did the Halloween party this past year I think at Disneyland or maybe it was the year before and it still was like that it was very special there was very few people there and you could get on any of the rides you wanted to mm-hmm. so it was like it can be done like they're doing it in sure. Disneyland they're just not doing it here anymore. And more of a planning tip I I'm, I, I assume that anybody watching the show knows this but people who plan their trip and they they plan their magic kingdom day on a day the halloween party is happening i cannot tell you the amount of people i see walking out pissed off sad because sad. they can't see the fireworks oh. or they can't see this because oh there's a party tonight yeah. yep like like disney yeah. i don't know it's just we we know that but a lot of people just don't yeah oh no you see it boy oh, oh yeah, yeah. what do you mean you're nights? kicking me out yeah. what do you go, mean i need a wristband go stand by guest relation the guest relation window outside the turnstile yep and you want to hear language mm-hmm. at yeah. the Magic Kingdom on any party well, night? They should be mad. Did you see the new floats that they're adding to boo to you? Yes. New I floats. mean, these are like the things that you want to go to this party for. Tomorrowland float. Really because cool that stuff. says Halloween. <laughs> I, I was like, I can't Alien. talk. You're being sarcastic. Right? <laughs> yeah, I really <laughs> I'm trying to figure yeah. out. I was. He's being I'm sorry. Sure. I am glad. <laughs> I, it is. It is overdue for them to make some of these Absolutely. changes to the parade, to the fireworks. Yes. I'm really glad for that. Um, but if they don't, if they don't really rein in mm-hmm. the number of people at these parties, um, that doesn't. Ma- it won't matter. It won't matter. Um, yeah. But again, as long as they keep selling the tickets, they're going to keep doing what they do. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right, that's it for news. We're going to move on to rapid fire. And Sean, we'll turn it over to you. Wow, we're 50 minutes in. Right? I know this was a. <laughs> and we started. To say. I okay. haven't been. I haven't been in the chair in a few weeks, and my timing's off. <laughs> we started at like 110. So okay. there we go. So, yeah, yeah, we started pretty late. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Uh, the descendant. Descendant, whatever. Descend, Descend dance. Descend dance party coming to Disney Springs for a limited time this summer. Uh, the party will take place at the Marketplace stage for a limited time through August 11th, 2019. Guests can boogie. That's very limited. Um, guests can boogie their way to the dance floor, take pics at a couple of photo ops, and catch on screen shout outs from some of their favorite stars of the Descendants. Yeah, let's movies. dance around in 110 degree weather. Uh, if you won't be, if you won't be at Walt Disney. Disney World to catch the limited run. Don't worry, the Descend Dance Party will take over the stage at Cosmic Ray Starlight Cafe as an added feature during the Not So Scary Halloween Party that we just talked about. So if you missed it, you can you can do that. So that's a thing that's happening, and you can go down to Disney Springs, I guess, and catch that. All right, thank you, Sean. 
Steve? Yes, so Darth Vader will once again be meeting guests at uh, the Star Wars Launch Bay at Disney's Hollywood Studios beginning on August 29th, 2019. Uh, He was replaced by Kylo Ren in February of 2016, but now he will be back. I think this is because Kylo Ren will be moving over to Galaxy's Edge, and Darth Vader doesn't really make sense in the timeline of Galaxy's Edge, so he'll be moving back, and Kylo Ren will be moving away. Thank you for clearing that up. People are excited about that, that he's coming back. So, mm-hmm. okay. They are. Maybe they should get out of the house once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Perhaps. Thank you, Steve. Denny. So I wanted to highlight um, the 40,000 Simba and Nala plushes that have been created worldwide to be sold at Disney stores um, and also on ShopDisney.com and in the theme parks. Um, 1995 gets you this very unique Plush, which was really cute. Went over to the Animal Kingdom Lodge the other night and held one in my hands. Super, I have the Simba cute. one. Super cute. See, nineteen ninety five, and then five dollars of your purchase price is donated to the Wildlife Conservation Network. That then is funneled through the Disney Lion um, uh, Recovery Fund um, project. They're trying to save forty thousand lions, oh. and so they've made forty thousand plushes. And I think, Rena, you said that. Um, since the Lion King came out, the original, the, oh, the, the lion, population yeah. of lions has decreased by half. Yeah, it, wait, so, there's only 20,000 yeah. left in the world, and they're extinct in 26 countries in Africa now. Really? Yeah, yeah. it's a little thing that uh, nobody, it, they like the bees. They're just, they're going, and nobody realized how quickly it was all happening, and so Scary. they're pretty desperate right now to try and help them, and so yeah. Animal Kingdom is doing a lot of stuff yeah. like y'all, that. Y'all went to the media event for that, right? Uh, yes, I yes. did. Yeah, I knew this. I had bought this plush uh, when it first came out. I saw it and liked it, and then I saw that they were donating. And I was like, oh, even better. Now I have yeah, a. Absolutely. Now I have. Now I feel better about myself. Awesome. So they're trying to create a nice future for forty thousand lions. They want to really increase the population. So I think it's pretty cool. So you get a cool plush and you do something good at the same time. Awesome. We should have played like the Sarah McLaughlin song. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the arms of the angels. Yeah, yeah. The sad. <laughs> Puppy Ever. shelter song. <laughs> I can't watch those commercials. <laughs> that got me to donate. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah. Um, all right. Thank you, Danny. Uh-huh. Corey. All right. Mine is so rapid. Um, we'll be at D23, and we're offering free hugs. The nice. I think everyone, are offering. <laughs> everyone at this table, I think, will be there, right? Uh, most, I guess. I don't know. Well, yeah. yeah. The majority of us will be there offering free John's hugs. on the fence. I'm on the fence. Oh, so. I just realized, did you coordinate your mic with your shirt? I did. Yes. <laughs> I did. Yes. Look, I wear pink. See, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I sure did. These are the important things. Hashtag gay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God. <laughs> that, that's it. It's rapid. Oh. Let's get to that our discussion. That was very rapid. All right. Thank you, Corey. Righto. Um, okay, mine is about food, as it always is. Um, so Walt Disney World has shared some of their uh, best bites for July 2019. Uh, there's some uh, um, Lion King-inspired things uh, at uh, Epcot. If you go over to the refreshment outpost, there's uh, there's the Nigerian meat pie or the No Worries panna cotta with layers of raspberry, papaya, mango, panna cotta, uh, Plus for adults, the Savannah Smoothie, which is coconut milk, agave, and cream liqueur. And also at Epcot at La Cellier Steakhouse is once again uh, serving its summer prefix menu through August 28th. Um, you can get the full menu of what they're offering for that um, on our website. But the special menu is $55 per person plus tax and gratuity or two table serve credit uh, to table service credits. But it includes a uh, an appetizer or main course and a dessert, which is pretty I feel like cool. pretty good for there. And then at Disney Springs, uh, Deluxe Burger has a new vegan burger that I will have to stop by and try. That's a plant-based patty with cabbage and mushroom ragu, mango salsa. Nope, lost me. Um, lettuce, tomato, and pickle and a vegan Parker House roll. A bunch of uh, boardwalks got some interesting stuff at Seaside Sammy, uh, Sandwich. Um, uh Flying fish. There's a million things on this menu. I am not going to continue to read them. Um, Thank so, you. Yeah, uh, but there is a, there's a bunch more. Uh, if you oh want to want to go over to www.info.com, you can check out that article, which is the Walt Disney World shares some best bites for July 2019 article. Thank you, Rhino, Gregory. Just laughing because in chat someone just asked who the bald person was sitting next to Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Craig is a 
Craig is a huge fan of 80s music, and his favorite is Sinead O'Connor. Oh. So he, every year around this time, in honor of Sinead, he shaves his head. <laughs> Nothing compares, no, Nothing compares to her. Or is it Britney yeah. Spears? Me? What's that? Or is yeah. it Britney Spears? Oh. He just he had Boom. a deep dive. Leave Craig. <laughs> going through alone. a hard time, Craig. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking of Corey's rapid fire, two things ago. Uh, if you're not showing up at the D23 Expo uh, to see us, which obviously that would be reason number one. Uh, number two is that you could go and actually see uh, a lot of the stuff that's being showcased there, <laughs> and uh, we now have more details about what's happening spe- happening specifically with Disney Parks. Uh, of course, the big one, as we've talked about before on the show, on Sunday, August 25th at 10.30, that's when the- Bob Chapek will have the big presentation where he'll talk about uh, Epcot and Marvel and everything else happening. Uh, but beyond that, they also announced that the Disney Parks Imagining Tomorrow Today Pavilion will be on the expo floor that will also show more of uh, the changes coming to Epcot, the Marvel areas being built in Hong Kong, Paris, and Disneyland Resort. Uh, Then, in terms of other panels, there will be stuff like Immersive Worlds, bringing stories to life in Disney parks, hosted by Disney Imagineers. Uh, We'll have Travels with Marty, a conversation with the Sklars and Imagineers uh, for the legacy of Marty Sklar. Behind the Art of Disney Costuming, Heroes, Villains, and Spaces Between. Probably will not focus on people stealing costumes, but the costumes themselves. Uh, inspiring Women Behind Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Magic Journey, my fantastical Walt Disney Imagineering career with Kevin Rafferty. And Mark Davis, in his own words, Imagineering in Disney theme parks. So that's just a taste of what you will get out of Disney parks if you're going to D23 Expo and you don't care about the movie and TV side of it all. I personally find it, um, like, just for me personally, like, odd that they're doing a legacy of Marty Slar because we've we've met him mm. and it just seems like he was alive just last year. Wasn't he? Well, well, no, two years, years, the last two, D23. Two years right after D23, two years right. ago, he passed away. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. I'm glad they're doing that. I'm glad they're doing that. So, no, they should. Mm. They should. All right. Thank you, Craig. All right. Before we wrap up, um, when I was thinking about topics for today's show, um, I actually had this idea when I first woke up this morning, and I figured let's just go with it. Um, it's real simple. Why are you a Disney fan? Why? Yeah, this will be a two-hour show. Could that in and of itself? <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm really going to try and shoehorn this into 15 minutes, but let's uh, let's start with you, Miss Danny. Awesome, awesome. Um, Why are you a Disney fan? Because my parents brought me to Walt Disney World when I was a kid, and I got to experience it um, as as a child and the magic and the wonder of it all. And then we always you talk about the generation, the next generation bringing the younger generation because as we age we have kids and we want our kids to feel the same way that we did when we were kids and so bringing our kids has been amazing and then eventually we got to the point where we said we don't want to leave anymore we don't want to have to get on the sad bus and go back to the airport and go back to life the sad (laughs) bus that's what it is and so um and so we moved down here so that we could have adventures with our family that we couldn't have had in Maryland. We were having great ones in Maryland, but um, just being, you get to check being an adult at the door in, in some regards when you come into a theme park. I mean, when I was working outside of, um, you know, before I joined the Diz, I mean, that's my happy place. And so if I had a rough day or had a hard conversation or hard moment um, I would go that evening and I could be in Epcot like that and so I was there I use it as you know as a park as a time out a time away my favorite foods are there and I mean don't you get to just walk in and be a kid again for a little bit and it feels good I'm too bitter for that you know (laughs) but I think I I, I, and I understand that because believe me I do plenty of complaining while I'm there like all these people and what are they doing and you're stopping in the middle of the walkway you're driving me nuts but but if you just stop and gear it down a little bit it's so much fun just to be there and take it as as it comes I mean when I have family who come down it that's when I rope drop I don't rope drop unless I'm with my sister and her family and so it's it's exciting to see it and experience it with others and just be a fan it's it can be a lot of fun okay yeah Craig what about you why are you a Disney fan 
Uh, I mean, it's just all I've grown up with. So I, I but don't. What is it? What is it that, that 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 you respond to emotionally? Like, what is it? What's the emotional connection to it that makes you a fan? Well, that's I. It's literally from being brainwashed <laughs> as a kid. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to no, skirt it, around that's exactly it. Exactly what it's, I was I gonna didn't, say. Yeah, I didn't it's, have a choice. It was what I, I did watch other stuff besides Disney, but like you know, Looney Tunes and Flintstones, Jetsons, all the all the classic cartoons. But it it just it was put in front of me, and it was constantly streamed and not streamed. A little early for that. It was just, it was constantly what was on my radar based on what my parents chose for me to watch. And I'm sure at some point it shifted in, and that was my, my choice of what I wanted to see. And I don't remember which show it was on, if it was this one or, or the Disneyland. But then I talked about where it started really coming in with the parks. Um, for me, actually, wasn't I, it was even after I visited the parks, but it was the Disneyland Fun uh, Disney Sing Along VHS mm. that was out. That like, mm. you know, I we didn't get the the park uh, the park VHS tapes that they send you until I think closer to like ninety six ninety seven. So I had this tape that was like, oh, I can I can see a Disney park every single day so by cool. sitting down and watching this mm. and. And then there's the music from the rides and other classic Disney songs that I know, and that was like what started fueling it even more. And am I the only just... one? Am I the only one in the room who did not come to Disney as a kid? Oh wow! I crickets. Probably, I hear crickets. Yeah, I, mean, I hear yeah. crickets. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Interesting. It's but yeah. So it was just it was there, and I mean it. And then it's the little things that held me is that I love the inventiveness of the attractions. I love the music. That's probably more mm. than anything mm. else. It's the it's the connection to to the area music, the music used in soundtracks. Like that's that's ultimately I think what captures me the most. And you know, it's just it's fun. See, I yeah, I I, I grew up in the you know uh, I was born in '64, so grew up in the '70s. Uh, as a kid, and uh, you know, that was not a golden age for Disney. I mean, we had bed knobs mm. and broomsticks. I remember that. I oh, was, love bed knobs. Yeah. But I remember okay. them. Like I remember watching that in, in our school auditorium. Um, there was like a special half day, and they, you know, put on. You know, we watched bed knobs and broomsticks in the school auditorium. But I didn't have any connection with Disney in that regard, uh, except my my friend who. His family took him to Disney World every summer. You can back and tell me all the stories about the theme parks. And that, so the movies, mm -hmm. you know, meh. The theme parks, I always wanted to. And I always said when I got old enough, I was going to go myself. And it wasn't that my parents didn't want to go. Couldn't afford it. Yeah. Could not afford it. Um, so, you know, I really should have been put in foster care for that. <laughs> um, no kidding. She's probably watching. Oh, I'm, ki I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but, you know, so I did not, I was not indoctrinated. This, I mean, my first time walking into a Disney park, I think I was 25, 26 years old. Um, God almighty, it's been almost 30 years. But did you feel like a kid when you walked in? I felt, no, I, I mean, it wasn't that I felt like a kid. I walked into Epcot and said, okay, this is what I did drugs to feel yeah. like. Everything's perfect here. Everybody's mm. happy. And that's why I mm. drank and did drugs was because I wanted to feel that mm. way. And mm -hmm. um, you know, and that just like became my my thing. And then just the creativity and the imagination that went into the attractions. Just, you know, when you're a kid in New Jersey and your only experience with theme parks is Six Flags. Six Flags Great Adventure. That was my only experience as a kid. Um, and then you go to Disney World. Like, oh my god because you've never seen anything mm -hmm. like that so no my head exploded mm -hmm. um, and I'll never forget that first time and then every moment from that point forward Disney was the central focus of my life mm -hmm. how was I getting here how long could I stay how often could I come eventually moving here starting the site starting Dreams Unlimited starting the show Everything that has happened in my life, every significant thing that has happened in my life came from walking into Epcot mm. and getting that feeling almost 30 years ago. God almighty. Really? 
just yesterday. No, no, it's it about 28 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Rhino, what about you? Um, it's a little bit of like what Craig said, only I, I wouldn't quite say brainwash, but it, do, it does start when at the young age and they use the melodic yeah. tunes to lure you in. And I mean, there's a video of me and I have it. I just found it when I was just home for uh, Christmas that um, on my computer, too. And no, no one will ever see it um, of me singing in my diaper, singing uh, Jolly Holiday and making my brother be Mary Poppins. And then like, oh, we have to have this. Yeah. And like. Um, you know that needs to be an auction. Item. <laughs> raise a certain yeah. amount of money, and Special Rhino will release screen. the video. Raise another amount of money, and Rhino will recreate. Oh, it. Uh, we'll see if he we will can dance get... around singing "Jolly Holiday" in a diaper. We'll get my brother down here, the electrician. I'm sure he'll be thrilled about it. But uh, um, it it was uh, it started with that, and you know, my great grandmother lived in Florida. Who I mean, she passed away when I, in 2007, but. Um, so we were lucky to come down and visit Nana all the time and go to the parks and stuff. And then it was one of those things where I don't feel like it's like genuinely hasn't genuinely become accepted in society in, until like the last 15 years or so about people's minds working differently from each other. You know, it was very like you creativity was not embraced in the same uh, in the same spectrum that it is now um, when I was little. And so it was a place where, you know, imagination was only for children not for adults you know you only imagine these things and you know i saw it as growing up you know liking the things i liked for as long you know there was this little period of time where i was like people were like i don't understand why do you like that and you'd be like i just like it and it would you know but then i'm an adult and i'm like i don't care what you say i like whatever i want to say like and we've kind of turned the table on that and so it was one of the first places i ever remember like where my imagination actually came to life. You know, I'd singing Jolly Holiday with my brother. We'd I'd reenact scenes from the Ewok movies because I had never seen Star Wars until I was a little bit older. I'd grew up with Ewok movies and I used to make all the kids at daycare reenact the scenes with me. And then I come to a place, now I'm, you know, 34 years old and I just walked onto a planet um, from the Star Wars universe, you know, like, I can't. Are um, you 34? Yeah, I am 34. Yeah, I was born in 1985, and uh, the year of Back to the Future. And um, but it's a very good year. I, I think to myself like, I, it's a place where you can visualize something here, and you know, and feel it here. But this is the embodiment of those two things mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And I, there are places that you know, Universal has really blown it out of the park with the Harry Potter and the theming they do. But, you know, there is no denying Disney was the first place to create a playground of wonderment and imagination. Yeah. And I think, you know, I don't really want to say for kids. And I don't want to even say, like, oh, it makes me feel like a kid. It just it validates that childlike wonder within you and says it's okay to still feel that wonder, whether you're 34, 85, you know, whatever age you are, that you can still have that pure ball of joy, yeah. you know. Sean, uh, I I always started as a like with the movies. Um, we didn't get to I didn't start in the parks necessarily, but um, you know I I remember very early memories of like I saw Snow White with my dad once. Whenever my mom took my brother to like a hayride with church, and I was too small, um, and I can remember seeing Mulan in the theaters. That's the first like movie I can ever remember going to watch. So I always just loved that about it and like loved the Disney movies and I think I just liked them I'm not a very emotional person but I loved the symbols of hope and stuff in it and the like there's a person no matter what it's like whether it's like Anna and Elsa that are like already like royalty and rich or if it's somebody like Cinderella or Aladdin who starts out with nothing like just getting to see that journey of that person and them having some goal or some dream and seeing someone achieve that even if it's like magical and unrealistic a lot of the time but they are just getting to see them work very very diligently and very hard and like do the things that they have to do to make it to where they want to be and so that just always translated well for me of like if I want to do something different than what my life is, like, I can't, obviously I don't have like fairy godmothers or like genies or anything, but I can make the best thing that I can make to give myself mm. the best shots and opportunities that I can. That's and cool. so I just feel like that gave me that, that drive, I guess. It gave me drive in life. There's also a lot of, um, I think one of the things that appeals to me is a lot of stories of redemption. Right. Mm. Um, of, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think, 
that resonates with me a lot. Mm-hmm. That the that that which is like that's, that's one of the best things about it is like because of your history, like redemption is something that's like inspiring and stuff to you, and because of my history, like becoming something that you want to be is like my you know mine's not a redemption story it's a like how do i build up story you know that kind of thing so that it like that drive and that motivation so people can see the same movie and get different True. completely yeah. feelings and emotions out of it and i think disney does a great job reflecting like you know helping you as a person see like what it is that you're wanting out of mm-hmm. the movie and out of life and everything like that and giving you that catapult to go do that whether it's redemption or whether it's drive. Yeah. See, and one of the things I, one of the reasons I think a discussion like this is important is we can go on and on about the price of the Halloween party and how crowded it is and this, that, and the other thing. But I think it's important to, like, every so often kind of get grounded mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. in why we're here. Mm-hmm. You know? Because it is easy when we do this for a living, we go into a bubble, and it is easy to start picking apart the negative. Mm-hmm. But it's important to remember why we're here in the first place because you can choose to look at that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, what about you? I I, pers- I personally moved here to be closer to Fun Spot. Uh, <laughs> I think course. that it's I'm so close As many now. Do. It's huge. I'm sure that's, <laughs> it's yeah. huge. But no, I'm, I'm going to use Craig's word too because that's kind of it's it's reality that I was brainwashed and I'm a little different. Um, and I. I I watched the movies, but that wasn't necessarily why I love Disney. It's I was, I'm theme parks. Julie, she's she's movies. If we did Disney trivia and and she's on my team, she's gonna answer everything. If I, we do theme park trivia, I got it. But I'm more theme parks. We used to skip Mardi Gras and come to Disney World. So I was I was born and raised in the theme parks. Every year, people flood into New Orleans. They go to Mardi Gras. We're, we're out of here. We're going to Disney World. And I think it was not necessarily that my reality was terrible, but it's escape from reality. And so when I did the college program, just a little taste of the summer in 1997 and came back summer 98, um, uh, 1998, and I was like, all right, this is where I'm going to live. I'm going to go work for Disney. I'm going to do something with Disney, whether I do graphic design or animate or something. I'm going to find my way in. Um, and so here I am. It's and my reality is great, and the it is escape from reality. Even even though we're so consumed doing this for 18 years, so consumed into every detail of, um, oh, gotta get that photo of the menu. Gotta gotta get that. Gotta get that. It's still it's still escape from reality. Even though it is my reality. You know you know what I'm saying? But yeah. it, it's hard to explain. Look, you know, there <laughs> I I have to remind myself of it all the time that. Um, for as frustrating as this job can be sometimes, I have the best gig in the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, I have to pinch myself mm-hmm. that this is what I get to do. I get to be creative, and I get to be creative around Disney, mm-hmm. and I get to create things. Because there are 2,000 friends right now watching us who would give anything to be in those shoes. That's absolutely mm-hmm. right. Absolutely right. Steve, what about you? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, we're out of time. Uh, <laughs> good talk, good talk. My story is a little bit like I had the same VHS that Craig had. The sing-along video was super important, and I grew up on Disney movies, and I think that was all good, and we came to Disney, and that was all good. But I, do, it's, I actually can pinpoint the trip that I think changed everything for me was uh, – at my school, we had a week after you finish high school, your senior year, before your classes are done, but before graduation. And I had my three best friends came down with me. I convinced them all to come. And I was in charge of planning everything as a high school kid. Wow. And I, my, none of the parents were coming. We were all coming by ourselves. So it was our first trip you know, where we got to feel like adults. And I remember landing an MCO and looking around and it just being the four of us. and kind of opposite from most people's story about Disney is that it wasn't a coming to feel like a kid. I got to, it was my first time coming and feeling like I was an adult. Mm. Mm. I got to experience something in the safety of Disney, so my parents knew I was safe, but at the same time, I was experiencing something, planning a trip, flying here by myself, staying in a hotel without parents, and then that you know, having that feeling and loving that so much that then having to decide, okay, I'm doing the college program because that was my favorite week I've ever experienced. 
uh, and I think I wouldn't have done the college program if it had not been for that trip because I like I wanted it was like feeding off of that so that mm-hmm. feeling of wow I'm like an adult now and I only got to experience that really for the first time at Disney as a senior in high school mm-hmm. and then doing the college program is so just you know blew that out of the water and then the rest is kind of history from there so cool it's amazing right yeah <laughs> Amazing. And then, you know, you think about just the, 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 the myriad different paths everybody in this room took. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we all ended up here. From mm-hmm. movies to theme parks to... Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's kind of crazy, especially, you know, I've got the visual now of Rhino and the diaper. Second oh, Jolly Holiday. It was a, a two by four was my broom. Oh, oh my broom, my uh, umbrella, umbrella. Okay. I, yeah. I also Just have a video like that. Did it have nails sticking out of it? <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> we nails. improvised in my house. I, growing I, up. I have, I have a similar video of myself with a in a diaper with, but it was Jungle Book was mine. So that, that is a video somewhere. Okay. So. All right, we need to see these videos. <laughs> I heard that Rhino will try to uh, show off this during the annual pass holder previews of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge being held August 17th to the 21st. Wow. Oh, Whoa. did they just say that? Breaking okay. news. Oh. Do, 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 do. Oh, is, annual is, pass holder preview. I'm checking my Only email. for Platinum, Has, Platinum Plus, or Premier pass holders. Okay, log For those of you who stuck around to the end, you, know what, Jackie, you got to hear. Jackie, are well, you watching? She's driving <laughs> Oh, she's right driving. Now. Tom. <laughs> she's driving. Yeah, really. Tom Bell. One of my content people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so folks, that's going to do it for this week's show. We hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we will be back. It's really been great to be back. I've missed sitting here. Um, We'll be back with you again next week with another episode of The Diz Unplugged. Have a great week, folks. And remember, do I have closing music? Thank you. Stay out of the damn lakes. (laughs) 